Cool. Yep, it's recording. <clears throat> awesome. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the Money Time Freedom Podcast. Today, I want to welcome welcome you to a very, very special guest uh, and client, someone I consider more than a client, but a friend and someone I care about as well. His name is Cade Junkerth. Um, his Instagram Instagram is, what is it, Cade? It's just Cade underscore Junkerth. And I'm sure my name will be in the title of this podcast because no one's going to know how to spell out Junkerth, but <laughs> Cade. <laughs> Kate underscore Junker is, is all it is on Instagram. J-U-N-G-K-U-R-T-H. Yes. But yeah, he's 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 uh trusted in working with me. Took a leap of faith about a year ago when I was just starting my online business coaching uh program where I help online fitness coaches uh scale their business. Uh again, his name is Kate. He's literally a living legend, guys, if you're listening to this. So definitely pay attention. Um, his first month in my program in just 30 days made 10K. One year of working together, he did a little bit over $150,000 with about 80% profit margins. And today we'll be interviewing not just his business journey, but his fitness journey. He'll be giving you guys tips on that and also self-development. And without further ado, let's uh, welcome Cade. Um, how are you doing today? And tell us about what you do and what you're about, man. Awesome, man. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me, Eric. I, I think, am I the first guest on the podcast? Yes, you are, man. I've been selfish. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm well thank you thanks for having me man i've been excited about this like i was telling you before all week man so i appreciate it um yeah so like eric said i'm a fitness coach and i started with him a little over a year ago and to take a little bit of a step back before i started with him uh, for my journey where it started <clears throat> i've been a personal trainer for about eight years, been doing this for about eight years, working with people to transform their lives through fitness. And I did the whole in the gym, personal training, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, basically living in a gym for about six years, actually a little over six years. And then I started doing this remote style when I found out about it, just seeing stuff on YouTube and online that this was a thing. And I started doing it on the side while I was still working in a gym uh, about four years ago. And then I ended up you know, just putting a lot of time in this and found out how you can help people like even better by just working with them remotely. Uh, and I ended up transitioning to doing this full time after getting fired from my office job. Um, got and fired? We, yeah, I got fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, me. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was honestly probably the best thing that ever happened because my boss, even when he was telling me that it just wasn't going to work out. And it, it was a little bit of a, you know, it, it was a mutual feeling. Like I, I was miserable there in my office job, but he told me in three years, you're going to be thanking me. Like you, you would have been miserable here. And he said, <laughs> he said, you know, I see potential in you and, you know, you seem um, really, cause I was, I was open that in this job that I was doing this stuff on the side when yeah. I was um, this sales office job that I was doing for a little bit, just trying something different. And so I was open and that I was doing the fitness stuff on the side with the remote coaching. And um, he, he just told me, like, you just seem really passionate about the fitness stuff that you're doing. You seem miserable here. It's just, you know, it's not working out. Um, and it was a mutual feeling. You know, I was miserable there. Like it, it was I just was going to work just, man, OK, it, <laughs> it just was not the right position for me. But um, so it was the best thing that ever happened. So I, I ended up you know, doing the remote coaching, going all in on it. And um, Eric just ended up like reaching out to me at the perfect time. Um, so it was really perfectly weird timing. Um, he reached <laughs> out to me over LinkedIn. And, you know, I was starting to try to do this stuff on my own full time, but felt super overwhelmed. And he was able to just kind of show me the ropes and, and open my mind to what's possible more than what what I knew at the time, you know, cause he's been through it and he's helped other people. So, um, fast forward to, to now, like Eric said, I've been doing it full time for about a year, a little over a year now. And it's been, it's been amazing. I mean, I feel like I'm living my, my dream and I feel like I'm helping people. And that that's the most important thing to me. Cause not that I'm making a ton more, I mean, I am making more money than I have in the past doing other jobs, but really it's just the fact that I'm able to do what I love for a living. And as long as I can pay the bills, like I'm happy doing that. And so it's been just super fulfilling to help others and 
and do this. So I, I thank you, Eric, for, for helping me get to this point. And I'm yeah. excited what the future holds. Thank you for trusting me. And one thing I want to point out real quick is, is here's what I want to say about high ticket coaching and outbound messaging. A lot of people fear outbound messaging because they're scared to ask for people for the sale. They're scared of bugging people. But literally, pay, Cade has paid me a lot of money, and I appreciate that, Cade. But my point is here, he's now thanking me for that. So I just want to put a, like, it just came up in my head. Like, for the people that are afraid to charge a lot of money and people are who, who are afraid to reach out to people and message people, like, Cade just counted it as a blessing in disguise. And for fitness coaches watching out there, relationship coaches, whatever the hell it is that you do, they're going to thank you for charging them a lot of money and getting them committed and helping them uh, transform into that, you know, their dream job or their dream body or whatever it is. So I'd like to just point that out. Just random side note. Um, what were you making at that office job, though? At the office job? So it was a sales position. So my, my base oh, okay. salary, yeah, my base salary was 55000 the, but literally, I I never made a single sale. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you are making a significant amount more. You tripled that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I like I took a, pay, a significant pay cut um, from what I was doing at my gym um, before I took this office job because yeah. before that I was a, a manager at a gym, like you know managing other trainers. So I was like the fitness director, is what they okay. call it. And so I, I was also doing personal training and doing my own stuff on the side. So I, I was just trying to, I think I got burnt out from like just living in a gym and, yeah. and just doing that so much. And so I was completely trying something different and doing this, this new sales thing from with like selling this technology that I had never knew nothing about. <laughs> yeah. And so, and it ended up, I, I don't want to bash my, my mentor in the job, but I did help him make sales. I was basically like his like junior salesperson who was like assisting him make other yeah. sales. So I did help him make a lot of sales, but I never like officially sold something myself type of thing. So, okay, makes sense. Yeah. What what kind of uh you know, talk let me know about like what kind of clients you serve and what is there a specific niche or is there a specific type of person you work with? Tell me a little bit about that. And also tell me why that's important to niche down. For sure. I've found that you, if you're wanting to niche down, and that this is something that I felt like I had to really think about when I was doing your avatar worksheet where you're figuring out like your, your client avatar is what we call it. Um, mm -hmm. So you know who to, who to kind of market to. And something I put a lot of time into thinking about is, all right, like what kind of clients have I worked well with, like in a gym and just in general? And, and who do I want to work with? Who do I feel like I can help? And something I've been seeing on online recently um, and what I feel like I've thought about back then that I didn't really know how to put it in words. And now I feel like I do is you're in the best position <clears throat> to help where you were at in the past. So, yeah. I, you know, where, where was I two, three years ago? Um and that, that's who I feel like you're in the best position to to help because you, you've been able to to do that for yourself and come out of that and reach certain goals. And so so my target client avatar, if you want to call it that, is someone who um, got super busy with their job and, you know, mm -hmm. life kind of took over. Uh, maybe they have other stuff that that's in their life that's like bad habits, maybe addictions, things like that, because because I used to drink a lot of alcohol. Did um, you? I did. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So I, I've made a few posts about it um, where, you know, and, and I was a younger guy and I feel like a lot of people in college that they just say like, that's what you do in college. Um, yeah. But I think I took it to the extreme and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so it was kind of an issue. It, it affected certain things in my life. And, um, but I'm I'm way past that now. Like I, I barely drink at all at this point. So that's one thing. And I feel like when you're trying to figure out who you're helping, that I think there's other things other than fitness that you want to take into account that you that you have experience with that you can bring to the table as well. Yeah. So yeah. So I know that you, Eric, struggled with with drug addiction in the past. You've been very open about it. Um yeah. like that. so so I think that's a big part. Like I'm sure you've gotten clients where they may have struggled with stuff like that in the past and 
that's like literally something that that maybe you don't directly you know coach them on but like just yeah. that, that you made it through that like that that helps them like feel like okay I can get past this and I, I can be in a position you know that's much better than where I'm at now so yeah yeah do you do you, do you feel like fitness was a big part of changing that bullshit you were doing for sure yeah, yeah. I think I mean I feel like if I didn't have fitness if I if I wasn't so passionate about this then I, I literally don't know where I'd be I think I just would have gone down a really bad downward spiral um with alcohol and stuff and just uh just being around people that that weren't moving forward in life and yeah yeah so where I feel to, to answer your question though um, my ideal avatar client someone that you know, super busy. They've let life kind of get in the way. You know, maybe they're they're really career driven or focused on on moving forward in life. They let fitness kind of take that back seat. And like I said, like maybe have other things in their life that that are addictions or or stuff that's just like, you know, things that they could yeah they, they could replace with fitness to to enhance their life and like and put that like addic- addictive personality into something healthy. Um, yeah. Because that's, that's what I feel like I've been able to do. So that's kind of who I found I've been able to help the best are people that are super busy, they're ambitious, but they've kind of got that addictive personality. And if we can just channel it in the right direction, yeah. then, it, then it can be a really good and healthy addiction, a good thing. Yeah. And uh, what do you think? Do you, let me ask you a question. Honestly, mm-hmm. when we first started together, you were charging super low, right? That was one of the biggest changes that we made that instantly obviously increased your revenue. But what I'm trying to get to is when you increased your prices, did you find that you got better quality clients and did you find that they got better results? Absolutely. Yeah, that's probably, I mean, that is the biggest thing that's been able to to help me grow is just getting past that, that mindset barrier of being able to charge more. Mm-hmm. And a hundred percent, I've found that yeah, when you charge more, you just get the the type of clients that are that are serious, you know, that they're and they're they're invested more because they're literally investing more. So they're more invested in the program. Yeah. And, yeah. Why do you think it was that you felt discouraged to charge a lot of money? What what do you think was that barrier? On <laughs> like if you could go back to yourself about a year ago, what, what do you think was stopping you? That's a good question. I think there's kind of levels to it, but um, for me, I think I was coming from that in the gym, personal training background. And I, I still had this mindset of like, how am I able to, to help people as well from afar um, without being there in person? So I, I felt like I almost had to prove it to myself that this system does work. And once I saw some success with my clients, like getting results, remotely that did help to be able to to be like okay this is worth it like this is just as good if not better than like in-person personal training so that that was a big thing that I had just had to kind of prove to myself but then just realizing that you know what we just talked about Eric that when people do pay more they're they're way more invested that that's another big realization I had to come to as well because I've literally made programs for family members and friends for, for free in the past, but they don't take it seriously if they're not yeah. investing in it. So when I've, what I've found is like complete strangers that are seeking me out um, and paying me a certain amount to, to reach these goals. They're just, they're really serious about serious about it. And it also actually, so like I said, there's levels to it, but I think it even challenges me more to want to provide a level of service that's worth what they're paying. Mm. So, so that, yeah, thing yeah that's definitely true man i mean you know in sales sometimes we may negotiate and the person that you know kind of pays up front or comes out a pocket heavy i feel like as coaches we 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 are more committed to over committing right why sure. why you mentioned one key thing here right there's a lot of personal trainers that think that online training sucks and there's no way you can get them great results. Now you specifically said that online coaching is better. Why is that? So I found that it's better because you're able to really help people with their habits outside of the gym as well. And there's a whole mindset aspect to it. And 
like with the, with the way technology is now and with how many times you can scale your time with like checkpoints with your clients being afar because you're not literally standing in the gym all day. So you've got more time to, to reach out to clients and be able to help and provide them services, you know, like a lot more frequently. Um, so that's what I found is like, you're able to scale your time more to serve these clients on a different level um, outside of the gym. So, mm. you know, you're able to put, I found that I've been able to put, um, and I'm just speaking from experience. Like I'm, you know, that I'm not saying like, this is absolutely the hundred percent way to do it, but I've been able, or I've found that I've been able to um, put a lot more into the nutrition plan, which mm -hmm. is something that, that I think is way overlooked in in-person personal training. It's just because like, you know, you're spending so much time in the gym. I feel like there's not even enough time to put enough effort and, and service into the nutrition side. So I've been able to, to really dial that in. Like I, I spend a lot of time tweaking and making that, adaptations to people's nutrition plan and so that's been really helpful and i feel like that, that really is the more i've done this even more important than the training side so mm. and and it's super overlooked in in-person personal training so that that's one reason and then um yeah so i think that's probably the biggest thing and then just being able to scale and have more touch points with clients because one thing that you helped me with was I felt like I was not getting that personal like touch point with, with the clients as much because when, when you're in person with someone, you know, you get that like one-on-one -on -one time. So I, I started implementing like a lot more just one-on-one -on -one calls or like zoom calls like this. And right. so you're, you're able to still get that time to be able to work through any issues that they're going for going through. And you don't need to be there for like, you know, counting their reps and everything like that. So it's just, it kind of just cuts through all the the wasted time. And it's like going directly on like, what do we need to work on? Um, you know, mindset wise, what are the things that you're struggling with? And it's just like, we're breaking through the barriers, just breaking through everything that's going to actually get them to their goals. And there's just no wasted BS time. Right. That makes sense. And how old are you, bro? I'm 28. 28. Mm -hmm. So if you had to go back to like when you started working in the gym and stuff like that, or, you know, just like a four or five years ago when you were thinking, or maybe when you started your online coaching business, what mm -hmm. would you have done differently? If you go back and talk to Cade three, four years ago, or even when you were 21, what would you have done differently? What would you tell him right now? <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to answer that question because I'm, I found, I yeah, I, I found out now that like everything that that I've done wrong has helped me learn to get to where I'm at now. So I almost feel like if I just went back and told my past self to do these things, I've been like, whatever, like, <laughs> I wouldn't have even listened, <laughs> even though it's like the future me, I've been like, eh, this is BS. Like, I think sometimes it, it kind of sucks, but you've got to see things for yourself. And you got to make those mistakes to be able to, to, to really fully grasp um, those changes that you need to make. Yeah. But with that being said, it, you know, if I went back and if, if I could just shake myself and be like, listen, you idiot, yeah. <laughs> then <laughs> say, I would say, um, you can charge more for this online stuff. I would say that like a hundred percent, I was literally charging a hundred bucks a month for, for these clients. And <laughs> so, so yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, so I'd say you could charge more. I would say, um, like marketing and becoming an authority um, and showing value and, and providing value on the internet is going to be able to scale um, your presence and your impact a lot more because you're not able to, to, to provide value at scale when you're just in a gym all day working with one person at a time. Mm -hmm. So I would say that to myself and I would say just stop being an idiot with bad habits <laughs> and <laughs> And, and things that's just wasting your time or, or just put all of your energy and focus and productivity into the things that's going to put you in a better position in life. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably the big things I would tell myself back then. Hell yeah. Again, just real quick. Uh, how much did you make last year again? What was it 150 or was it more? It was like 156,000 okay. in gross. 
Yeah, because we just went live on Facebook. I forgot to do it. So whoever's watching on Facebook, if you guys want to watch his full interview, this is uh, a friend and a client, Cade. Um, he's a legend, did $150,000 last year with 80% profit margins. And uh, we're just kind of interviewing him on, on his fitness journey and business journey and overcoming. Um, he was maybe a borderline out of alcoholic, I just found out. So if you guys want to watch the full thing, it'll be in the podcast and in my group. Um, but let's get back to it. Okay, so you're 28. And uh, yeah, I totally agree with you on that fact that our mistakes are part of our journey. They're just like probably the best mentor you can have are your mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else you would have done differently? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's tons of things I would have done differently. I'm just trying to put it into words on what I would have said to myself. To, Tough to question. Do. Yeah. What's that? It's a tough question. Yeah, it's a tough question, but other things would be just be, and this is something I got from um, actually Wes Watson off the internet, and it's like, be the leader that you always needed. And so that's what I would tell myself is like, just aim to be the person that you've always needed in your life. Like aim to be that leader that that you've always wanted and you've always wanted to look up to and mm -hmm. just that's kind of your North star is like, I want to get to that point. I want to get to, to being that person that, that I've always needed um, in my life. So kind of, oh, yeah. a, kind of philosophical with that one, but that's what I, one of the big things I'd tell myself. Oh yeah. I love that. Um, and with your experience of having leaders in your life, do you feel like uh, maybe that's something you would have done sooner or what do you think like some of the biggest like pivots war with like just accelerating your life, whether it's with fitness relationships or, or business. <clears throat> yeah. I think one thing I realized now is seeking out and with you, I didn't seek you out, but I've seeked out other mentors mm -hmm. um, in other areas and stuff like that since I've worked with you, cause it was a good experience. And I think I, I was just so skeptical of everything on the, on the internet. And, and I think just now that I'm like, this is what I do. I'm, I'm selling things through the internet and helping people through the internet. Like I, you know, there's, I know now there's people like me who truly do want to help and they're just using the internet as a ability to scale their services. Mm -hmm. and I think sometimes it's hard to see that um, whenever maybe you're not, someone that's doing that yourself because it's almost like real recognizes real. <laughs> and it's like, if you, if you see kind of the stuff that they're doing um, and you're not doing that stuff, then sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, what's, what's BS or who's actually trying to help and stuff like that. But I think now that I see what it takes to, to market your services um, and help people, then like, I, I'm able to recognize like, all right, this, this dude's legit. Like he's, he can help me get where I want to go. Um, and, you know, just seeking out the people that are legitimately people that are where you want to be, because it's, it's like your whole life, you take advice from, from people like your parents or maybe teachers and things like that, that are in honestly, and I don't mean to say this, like, to be mean, or it's going to kind of, I'm not going to kind of sound like a dick, but people that, <laughs> people that aren't are in broke. The, yeah, yeah, are broke or not in the position where you want to be. So you know, you have to actually actively seek out those people that are in those positions because, you know, most people don't have those type of people in their in their lives already. So you have to seek out those type of people um, to to get where where they're at or just at least surround yourself with people doing doing the things you want to do so that you're at least subconsciously like helping yourself believe that it's possible and picking things up along the way. Yeah, for sure. It's just not normal. You know, I, mm -hmm. I feel like our parents didn't do it. The majority of human beings don't do it. So we're all, we only know what we're taught. Right. So if you're not surrounded by individuals that are doing it, then you're kind of just, it's like Pluto to you. It's like Uranus, like entrepreneurship is just like a whole nother world. Right. So I think it's hard for people to believe in it working. Um, it's just like that unknown, like a different planet, you know? hundred percent. And it's just, yeah. And I think some people, 
like for myself, I, I feel like I grew up super conservative and it, it's like, it's, it's easy to just go the route that like you're supposed to do with the call, like going to college, which I, which I did. And I got a degree and I don't necessarily, like I said, regret it because you know, all this stuff, like I've learned from it, but, but like, I'm never going to go back to school because what I've found is like, you can find the information to further yourself and get where you want to go, you know, on the internet or pay, pay people that you directly know are doing the things that you want to do, as opposed to like going to school and just learning information from, from a, just a regular professor or something like that. And so, yeah. yeah. So what do you, what do you think is, I know a little bit earlier, before we went on Facebook, you mentioned that a little bit about, you know, teaching people stuff outside of the actual physical part. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to success, whether it's for fitness or business, what do you think the number one most important thing is? The number one most important thing is mindset. It, that's the number one most important thing. Like if you're not in the right mindset and if you're not ready to achieve what you wanna achieve, like some people think they're ready um, and they want to believe they're ready, but they're not like your mindset has to be right. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, like when I, when I was getting started with you, like with this, I was, I was ready. Like, I was like, I'm ready to to like, to actually do this. And like, I, you have to fully commit. So yeah. I think, yeah, it, it's like the mindset and the commitment level. Like you can't, I actually wrote a post on this earlier this morning. I've been trying to write a lot of posts out, but you got to sometimes just burn the boats. Like there can't be plan B's plan C's. Um, cause I'm the type of person, like, I'm just, like I said, kind of conservative and I'm scared to take risks, but this was probably the biggest risk I ever took just going all in on this. And it was mm -hmm. like, you know, I had other plans in my head. Like if this doesn't work out, do this, but you can't have that. Like sometimes if you really want to like follow your passion and, and go on on something, you got to burn the boats and like fully commit and like, this is it. And I'm doing this, yeah. and I think, you know, working with you and like, at the time, like putting a, a scary investment down, it was like, yeah, th like this is something I'm fully committed to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 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 I totally agree with you. Um, there's such like an emotional connection with money. I feel like sometimes. Right. And people think about money in a way like it's never going to come back. So when you put that skin in the game, it's like, I have to commit. 100%. Right? Is, yeah. is that kind of like what you're saying? It, it's it's the investment, but it's also like the the time investment and and just like the investment of of your mental space almost of like this is an important priority for me. Like what what I found like if you're wanting to go through a fitness journey and you're not in the right mindset to do so, like there's there's other things that you probably have to go through to get to the point where where you're in the right mindset or there's there's things that are limiting your beliefs or your mindset that we've got to break through, to make sure that you are actually ready and committed. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm thinking of examples. Like I've got this new client that just hopped on and like, he was ready. Like he, he was like in the position where he's like, I, I want to get in the best shape of my life. You know, he, he seeked me out. Um, and he was like, you know, I'm doing 75 hard. So he was already like fully committed on like, the time he was going to invest, which I think 75 hard is like, you don't need that much time invested to, to reach your goals. But yeah, just saying this to say like, he was ready and he was like fully committed to making, making changes and changing his life. And so I was able to just be able to provide him with the right guidance to do the right things, be efficient and effective, optimize his time with what he's doing. Um, but he was like fully committed in his mind to like, he wants to make those changes. Yeah. So, you know, you get clients like that. And then there's also people that they want to think they're ready, um, but there's still limiting beliefs in their mind or like, you know, things like, well, um, you know, I, I'm wanting to get a promotion at work. So I don't know if I can put much time into this. Yeah. You, you've got to be able to, to balance in your head and, and get beliefs like that because out of your mind, because you can absolutely like level up and other things, like everything else you're doing in life while you're making a fitness transformation. And I think that's something people need to know is like, you can absolutely reach your fitness goals and make this a part of your life, no matter what's going on in your life. Yeah. So, 100%. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, the way I think about it is that's part of coaching is the way 
is not just giving them a meal plan, nutrition plan, uh, workout plan, or business plan, but it's it's coaching is about changing the way that they think. Mm-hmm. Because if we can teach a human being to think the way that we think, then they'll have the success that we have. Because the way that we think is when we wake up and we don't want to do when we don't want to do messaging, when we don't want to take sales calls, we don't just say fuck it. Or when we don't want to go to the gym because we're sore or tired or have a long day, have eight sales calls booked. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We still make sure we go because we it's not about your time. It's what you're prioritizing your time to do. A hundred percent. Yeah. So if you can change a human's thinking from saying, hey, you know, think like this instead, like, you know, motivation doesn't mean shit. It's the actual discipline and commitment of actually doing what you got to do. Right. Right. Yeah. I I think you hit the nail on that with like people want to think the way you think a lot of times if they're seeking you out to want to work with you. Like with you, Eric, you know, for me, some of the things, um, like I want to, I want to think like you think is like, I feel like you have no, I don't know. You've you got balls when it comes to sales. It's like, <laughs> it's like you have, you have no hesitation or like, you know, you're just super confident. And so it's like, you know, I, the information, I feel like I, I've learned it. And like, you know, I even, even before working with you, I, I kind of already knew what to do. Like the information is there, but a lot of times like being coached is more, um, I want to try to, Valuable. Yeah. And it's like, I want to try to help yeah. this person think the way I think so that they can reach these goals and get the, get the thoughts that are holding them back yeah. in their head. So, yeah, bro, that it's not an information problem for most people. It's an execution problem. 100%. It's actually doing, it's like, we know a lot of the shit we have to do and we'll yeah. hire another mentor to teach us the same exact shit that we already, like people know they have to, they know they have to go to the gym. They know they have to stop feeding themselves cheeseburgers all day. Mm -hmm. but they choose not to do it which is why when you have a coach you're not paying for the hey eat less and work out more you're paying for the execution right sure it's like you knew you could charge more you've seen coaches charge more you knew certain you know strategies and you know of course we advanced that and optimized that and gave you quicker ways to implement it right Mm -hmm. of course we helped you optimize those things but people are paying for the execution 100 percent Uh, that's yeah. what I think. Yeah, I think it's the it's the execution and it's the customization and it's the yeah. let's meet you where you're at because you can find all the information on the internet, but it's like it a coach has not only seen where he's been at and been able to to work through that, but he's seen a lot of different people that he's worked with in different situations with similar mindsets of where you're at now, and been able to to get them where they want to be. So it's, yeah, yeah I, I think that's a big part of it is like, it's, it's the execution. It's like, okay, this person's right here and they're thinking like this. I've helped myself and other people be able to stop thinking like this and, and get to here um, where they want to be. So it, it's yeah. like, yeah. So I think it's, it's the execution, but also like someone that understands where you're at and, and is able to cus- customize the right path to get you where you want to go um, and is, is there to be able to break through any obstacles that are going to come up along the way. Cause they, they inevitably will. Um, yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing is like, yeah, w- the information's there. Um, but the execution is, is like making sure that obstacles or things that come up don't derail you um, and that you stay on course because a lot of times the, the information's there, but, but people will still just stop or the, you know, they'll just, they'll, they'll kind of get ADD and, and say, well, this information is going to get me where I want to go, but there's also this information. And there's all yeah. so it's like a zigzag instead of a straight line. Right. So what would you say to someone, whether it comes just, just general accomplishing their goals and becoming successful, whether it's business or fitness, what would be your top recommendation to someone that's doesn't know what they're doing or is fearing taking action on their goals, uh, what would just be your best recommendation for them? My best recommendation for someone that's trying to reach their goals and be successful, whether it's business or fitness, is surround yourself with the right influences, 
and only fill your brain with the, the type of information and content that's going to get you to where you want to go. And so you're, you're going to have to curate that content. So do like a full audit of what kind of content you're taking in. When and you say content, you get help uh, give us some context on that. What do you mean by that? I mean, like what you're, what you're consuming over social media, what you're watching on YouTube, what you're watching on TV, what you're reading, mm -hmm. like, you know, start curating the content um, that you're consuming only aimed at like where you want to go. Mm. So do, do a full audit of, you know, Fuck what, yeah. yeah. What am I consuming? Like what, what am I, what kind of beliefs am I listening to and do a full audit and literally curate that content to like only be things that are going to get you where you want to go. <laughs> and sometimes that content is from people in your life that you're listening to. So sometimes, and it, it's really hard, but it's like, you might need to further yourself from certain relationships. Um, if, if the content or the things that they're telling you or the things that they are trying to push their beliefs on you with are not something that's aligned with where you want to go. So that, that's my, my number one thing is, you know, not only yeah. the, the content over social media and what you're consuming, reading all that stuff, but also just like, what kind of content are you taking in just on a daily basis from everything around you? So yeah, those those are some golden fucking nuggets. Uh, you guys should put that shit on on rewind right there. <laughs> Stuff that's so simple makes such a big impact in your life. So simple. Just the fucking information you consume. Turn off the news. Oh my god, dude. You know one thing I fucking hate? I don't know what you guys use, but I use MSN, right? For my uh browser. And every fucking day. There's always some bad news and I just can't help myself to click it. And I'm like, no, don't click it. And I open it. It's always the worst news in the world. Aliens are about to attack this crazy news. I got to change my homepage, man, but I don't watch the news. I don't watch anything negative. Of course, I have empathy for people out there in other countries suffering. In fact, one of my biggest goals is to... um. Uh, donate money to like kids in Africa and stuff further down the line. In fact, when I die, I think I'm just going to give all my money to poor kids. Like I'm literally going to walk around and just hand them out fucking like $10,000 each. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't want to go through an organization because I don't trust them. I just rather just here's 10 grand change your life. You know, are you thinking, are you going to have kids? Or are you, are you at this point? Not uh, this, this isn't about me. This is about you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to have kids? I honestly, where I'm at right now, I, I'm, I'm on the leaning towards the no on, on having kids. Really? Yeah. I don't expect that from you. Really? That was actually my next thing. You've been with your girl for a while, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're kind of both in the same situation. I think that, you know, we're just, I don't know. We we're, we're, really? in yeah, we, and we just, we want to enjoy life. You know, maybe that'll change. It could change down the line, you know, we're yeah. not completely ruling it out. Like we don't want to have kids, but just, right. before it counts, just there's other things that we want to enjoy right now so yeah let's get into that man how uh how long have you been with her and is she an entrepreneur and number three i know this is a loaded question <laughs> um do you find it challenging being an entrepreneur and having a girlfriend yeah this is a super loaded question for sure um yeah, yeah i feel like this could be a whole podcast to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking relationships and stuff like that but We've been together for a good while. We've known each other since college. Um, so, wow. yeah, so so we went to Texas A&M University. Um, we met each other the end of our junior year. So I, I was 22, she was 21. Um, and uh, we're both 28 now because she's about to turn 28 in a couple of days, actually. And so, um, yeah, so we've been together for a really long time. Um, I ended up moving back to Houston and she moved to Dallas after college where she's originally from. So we did long distance for a while, super rough. I ended up um, moving down or moving up to, to Dallas um, to be with her. And yeah, we've been through lots together. And I, uh, you know, I told her obviously when I got fired that I was going to do this full time. And, you know, she stuck with me through everything, even though it's a super risky thing. I mean, obviously that, you know, when you're with someone and you're like kind of planning the future with them, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 
you know, you, you want things to be stable. And sometimes it's scary if like they lose their job or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, people around me, like my parents, her, her mom, they, they don't understand if, if they didn't do it themselves or if this isn't the way that, that they live, like, and they don't know people that are doing stuff like this, you know, sometimes they don't understand like that this can be something really fruitful. And, and, and also that, like, I feel like I can't work a nine to five, like, and, and she works at Charles Schwab, which is like an investment firm. Um, so it's like super, oh, conservative. Wow. yeah, <laughs> like super nine to five conservative type of job. So it's, it's really different. So we, we honestly do live very different types of lives, Yeah, um, but we are still both, you know, very ambitious in our own way. You know, she mm-hmm. wants to like move up the corporate ladder and stuff like that. And like, I, I'm wanting to grow the business and do my best and, um, live my purpose and, and grow my everything that I'm doing. So we're both still very ambitious. We both, we both still support each other. Um, but it does sometimes it is difficult, um, that we do have such different types of jobs. Um, but as long as, you know, you support each other, then I think that's just the most important thing. And mm. as long, you know, as long as you can, um, respect, uh, what they're doing and, and that they're trying to, to grow in their own way. I think that's, that's the most important thing too. Yeah, for sure. I'm not sure if I answered every question in that loaded question, but. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember what I asked. I probably shouldn't have asked three times like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cause I know it can be very challenging having a relationship while being an entrepreneur. Um, you know, cause all we ever think about is growing. I right. feel like, yeah, uh, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, that's literally all I think about. Even when I drink and go out, I'm like thinking about like, how can I scale my business? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it it is like all I think about, like I, even on, so I, I've got a WhatsApp group with my clients. And today one of my clients was like, I've got a day off of work. What do you guys like to do for fun? And then I, I messaged back like, I don't have days off. <laughs> what I do for fun is like keep helping you guys um, write content because that literally like I, I've fallen in love with like writing content because I feel like it's it's almost just getting my thoughts mm. on mm. onto paper and and being able to I don't know like it, it's therapeutic and cathartic in a way it's just yeah I mean, yeah you're able to just fully express yourself um, yeah so I feel like that's funny because I was just thinking about that yesterday I was like you know what? I actually really enjoy making content like at first it's very you have a lot of resistance because you're not really sure about the framework and the basically the reason why you're like the intention of your content yeah right, is ultimately like to influence people kind of and but now like once you learn the intention of it it's it's actually pretty fun Right. I mean, really, you're just essentially trying to help people. Right. Yeah. I think it's the intent that that can make it fun or or potentially not fun, because if if your intentions are just like, I just want to sell something like that's that's the only (laughs) then sometimes it can can feel like a job. But like if you're I think if your intent is like, yeah, I want I want to sell something, obviously, but because I want to help people, then and I want to express myself in the same at the same time, like in the same breath, I want to, I want to help people through this expression that I, that I've gone through these things and I can help you type of thing. So that's when I think like when the intentions are right, it's, it's, it's super fun and it's, yeah, it's, it's almost addicting. Like I, I, yeah. One of my favorite parts about doing this now is like writing content. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and for the entrepreneurs out there, what do you, if you had to give them tips about content, what do you think is the whole idea or what do you think, like, let's put it this way. This is what most people do is they post workout videos or they basically have a sign that says, hire me, right? right. On every post, like I do nutrition planning, I do workout plans, yeah. 12 weeks, blah, blah, blah. What would you recommend to do instead? What works for you? Well, like doing stuff like that, first of all, let's talk about why that doesn't work. It's because literally 
everyone that does this is doing that. That doesn't help you stand out from anyone. <laughs> so that's just, I, I, that's basically saying I do the same thing as every other coach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a good way to put it. I never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> so what you need to do is, like I said, like think about the things and the experiences that you've gone through and what differentiates yourself from, from the other coaches. And it, it's going to feel like you're pigeonholing yourself in a way because it's going to actually turn certain people away, but that's what mm -hmm. you want is you want to turn the people away that already wouldn't be interested in what you have to offer anyway, and directly impact and talk to the person that you, you want to work with and would want to work with you. So it's, mm -hmm. it's almost like you got to be polarizing, um, but direct your content in a way that's going to turn away certain people and, and bring in the right people. Yeah. It's when you try to help everybody, you help nobody. When you focus on one individual, you'll get a lot more direct, more, your content will be more resonant. Right. And you'll attract the right customers. Yeah. That, that's right. something that you do super well. And I've <laughs> at sometimes gotten away from, and I've had to like steer myself and you've had to basically steer my, steer me back to it is because it can get super easy to, to get caught up in the vanity metrics. Like, I think that's what you call it. Like the, mm -hmm. the likes and the engagement, the views. Um, yeah. And there's been times where I've had content that's kind of popped off and gone viral, but a lot of times that's, that's the content that doesn't have any value. It's just like a, <laughs> yeah, um, like a stupid, funny video or, or something that's just kind of, it's, Sometimes that's good because that that'll bring in a certain amount of people and it's kind of just like getting a big wide net and bringing some, yeah. which sometimes you do want that. Um, but the content that's actually going to bring in the people that you're looking for a lot of times is more of like the niche down, like people where you're, you're bringing in certain types of people and, and not yeah. like, it's not for everyone type of thing. I think, I think like saying that that's a very, uh, there's a lot of value in what you said. I think in a perfect world, if you can create three to six posts per day, and a lot of people are going to be like, that's excessive. And I want people to understand you don't have to post that much. But if you're a freak like me and Kate, and this is all you give a fuck about is getting <laughs> like growth, right? Mm -hmm. I think in a perfect world, if you could post literally six times per day, because I've been listening to a lot of Gary V. And that guy posts like six, seven times per day on each platform. If you can post six times per day, one of them being a virality. So like the stupid stuff that gets a lot of likes to kind of like cast your net out there, yeah, which is going to ultimately lead to more engagement. And then what happens is Instagram is going to reward you and show you to more people, even the stuff that isn't so broad and more narrowed down, it's going to hit more people in that narrow audience. So in a perfect day, right? posting like six pieces of content, one that's viral, based on virality, a, a broader net, you know, one that's value, one that's like connection posts, and then like a call to action yeah. would be like the perfect world. Challenging, right? It's a lot of content, yeah. but would be the perfect world. Just having that combination of all, because I've been listening to like a lot of, uh, again, Gary Vee's podcast and the people he interviews are really big on Instagram. And they'll actually like, and, and a lot of people could take this, these as tips is they'll post some, they'll post like six, seven times per day and they'll immediately delete it if it doesn't spark very quickly. So a lot of your content and marketing is about testing, seeing the feedback and then, Hey, let's do this differently instead. Yeah. So I've got a really good point on that note that that's helped me recently and it's basically like find certain platforms, like know what your main platform is that you really want to grow and kind of like invest most of your time into and mm -hmm. like, you know, pick one that's like, this is my main platform, but then have other platforms that are almost like testing platforms yeah. that, you're able, that you're able to post more, um, kind of see what people are like, get those data, data points where like, what, what are people liking? What, what are people not liking as much and mm -hmm. be, able to, be able to test out all that stuff so that you can kind of um, use what works on your main platform. Yeah. So in the past with, with my reels for Instagram, like I, I went crazy on TikTok with posting. Like I just, 
that was my test platform where like I was just making a ton of videos, seeing what works, what what doesn't work, and the things right. that I would post on my Instagram. Um, and then what I'm doing now is I've been doing r- more writing based content on Twitter as my testing platform. Right. And that's been um, where I test things out to see what what's working, what's not working. And then I've been just screenshotting those tweets and posting stuff that got good engagement on Twitter, which I have like the smallest audience on Twitter, but you can still see what, what people like or don't like. Yeah. So, but screenshot that and then posting it on Instagram um, for my main platform. So. Yeah. I don't mess around with Twitter too much either, but that's what like Alex Mosey and Gary V does. So whoever's listening, like test the headline out in Twitter. That's what they do. The big guys, the big shots, exactly what Kate said. And then if it blows up, then maybe lean into that a little bit more on your Instagram and Facebook, like exactly what Kate just said. That's a great strategy. Yeah. I think the big part is like, like, like I said, like I've literally got, I think 26 followers on Twitter. Like it's not, but you're still, (laughs) you know, still, if, if something got five likes and something else got one, like you're still able to see what's working and what's not. And so what I like about Twitter too is that you can just see who looked at it. Like, like sometimes like hundreds of people looked at it and sometimes people like 10 people looked at it. So right. you're still able to see like what's catching eyeballs. Same thing with TikTok. You can just see the views in general. Yeah. Yeah. Making data-driven decisions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. That's, I think one of the biggest reasons why people fail is because they fall victim to not doing that, the stuff enough until they get good at it. Right. Yeah. Like they expect to be great at something that they just started. Like, oh, you know, one week I didn't get a client. One week I didn't, my, my, no one, you know, liked my content. Well, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta keep doing that shit until you get good at it. You didn't do long, you didn't do it long enough to get good at it. We all suck at first, but once you do the suck, once you suck long enough, you know, it becomes just irrefutable for you not to be good at it eventually over time. Yeah. And I think too, um, like not still being not scared to, to suck, even if you've had stuff that's been successful, you know, because if you only, if you don't experiment and test certain things out, like you're, you're not going to continue to grow as much. So like for me, I've had certain things that have, have popped off and I, like, I know that work, but I still want to try to try new things out because you don't want to stop growing or or stop experimenting with things that might also work. So, you know, some of my posts get a bunch of likes and views and all stuff like that. Sometimes it's like way down there, but Mm -hmm. you know, if you think of it more like you were saying, it's just data driven where it's, you know, just use that as data to be able to, to learn what works and and learn certain things then then don't think of the feedback as, as like, positive or negative just think of it as like things that are going to help you learn along the way yeah yeah for sure that's some really good value right there um awesome man well i i think we had a pretty solid training today again if you guys are watching on facebook this will be in my podcast uh if you want to look that up it's called the eric klima's money time freedom podcast uh, you should definitely watch this. I mean, K just dropped so much value enough, honestly, so much value for you guys to make more money and just be more successful in life. Um, if you're looking for some help with your fitness goals, make sure you go follow at Cade underscore J U N G K U R T H K Junkerth. Um, you know, he's helped change over how many lives Cade with fitness. Hundreds of lives. Uh, in the last year, uh, I looked at the numbers and I've worked with over 100 people just in the last year. So I've been sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of lives fucking changed out here. And um, I guess just to, to end it, like what what would be your final recommendation or what would be your final you know, thing you'd like to say to the people listening today? Well, before we get into that, can I can I ask you a couple questions, Eric? Just wanted to just wanted to ask, be able to ask you a couple things, if that's sure. all right. Okay. Um, I was just curious, like what what's your current like training style and like what what are your goals fitness wise at this point? Are you lead genning me? 
<laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious. <laughs> Uh, I mean, honestly, I'll be honest with you. I've slacked off a bit because my main, um, my main thing that I focus on right now is the business. However, fitness is a priority for me and staying healthy in shape, but I'm okay with not being completely shredded. Like I was, you know, a few years ago, even two years ago, I was pretty lean. However, it does bother me that I'm not as shredded. I would like to be like that but in this position in my life the business is the only is what makes me the happiest and serving you guys and teaching you guys new stuff and and me growing as a man or else i'm just not happy right? right with that being said i do not make excuses i'm still in the gym five times a week the workouts have gone become shorter my diet has become less strict i don't cook my meals anymore i eat more um have a better relationship with food, right? I, I get all my food from a meal prep service and they feed me very healthy in um, better size portions. And I used to restrict my diet a lot, yeah, which was mentally fucking me and um, caused a lot of emotional issues and body dysmorphia, stuff like that. And now I'm in a position where I just wanna be, look good, be healthy, stay strong. Um, but I do admit that I could try harder if that answers your question, but I'm in the gym five times a week. Uh, I love cardio without fitness. I mean, just, you need fitness in your life, man. You got to take care of your health. You know what I mean? I, I completely agree. And like, I, I think entrepreneurship in itself is like a sport and it's almost like you got to train your body to, <laughs> to be able to yeah. with what you're doing. So I, I totally get it, man. You know, but I, I think, you know, you're the type of person that you're you're sprinting right now with your business. There's probably going to be another season in your life where you're you're more sprinting on the fitness end. So it's just it's just about like spinning different spinning plates. I think I think I got this from one of the mindset coaches you had um, coaches up one time, and it's like the spinning plate theory, where it's like you got a bunch of different spinning plates in your life, like fitness, your business, mm -hmm. your relationships. It's like you want to keep all the plates spinning, but sometimes you you need to focus more on one and make sure it's going really fast. Yeah. Um, right. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. What's what's the other question? Yeah, just the, the only other question I want to ask was just um like what's next for you? Like what what's the big thing that's gonna push you forward with your business? And mm -hmm. like what's your bottleneck right now that's hold holding you back or that you're working on? Ooh, we're getting down to the nitty gritty now, asking some deep questions. Yeah. I mean, I'm fully committed to this thing, man. Um, I'll probably, I know I'll never be happy because the more I make, I'm never happy. Again, happiness for me is in growth. And so, you know, my goal is more of a 10 year goal, right? Is, is getting this company to where it's sellable and to where it's also able to operate without me in it whatsoever. Maybe just like once a month meetings, you know, put a CEO in there, CMO, CFO, which are skills I have to learn to build, right? So I want to get the business to, you know, at least between 20 and $40 million per year, which would probably be like a five-year goal. I can see that happening. And then my 10-year goal, just with like business and, and career and all that stuff is to start to flip businesses, buy and sell businesses um, in real estate and assets, huh. right? So, uh that's that's where I see myself. Those are my 10-year goals. The biggest constraint you can say right now is actually people, right? We don't have a problem booking calls. We don't have a problem uh, with, with, we can improve on all those things, um, but it's literally people. So we're right now we're actually in a point where we're hiring a lot of people and they should be starting next week. And that will allow for us to handle more volume because right now we're at a position where like, my closers can't even take any more calls. So we, we can't even spend more money on advertising because of the fact that we can't even handle that volume. So right now is people is the problem, putting the right players in the game, the right, you know, people higher up than just the closers as well, um, which we'll handle that problem next week. We got a closer and another setter coming. And then from there is scaling it more, putting that CMO in there, CFO, you know, where I could step out of the business a little bit more. And then, you know, by then I should be 
you know, at least half a million to a million per month, I'd say, you know? And so I, I see like you're trying to scale um, and be able to remove yourself more in the business, but it is your goal to sell the business. Is that what you're wanting to do? Or are you, or are you just wanting to basically be able to overlook this and have it be a part of your kind of portfolio of what you're building in the future? Just curious. I mean, that's a good question. You know, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to sell it. I definitely don't right now. Um, but I want to be able to be in a position where I can sell it because right. it's able to operate without me. And that's a real business, a right. real business. Like right now, I'm just a CEO, to be honest with you, whoever's listening. I'm a CEO, which means I still have a lot of power and position in the company. I want it to be able to operate. And it's not because I'm lazy. It's not because I want passive income. It's because I want to build a business to that point where I can say I've done that, right? right? I want to be able to still be a big player in the company, but be able to say like, hey, like I can sell this. I can, you know, I can build another company because I'm a big believer on focusing on one thing and one thing only. And then from there, then you branch out to multiple um, sources of income, right? Building wealth, true wealth right? Versus most people are like, oh, I'm going to make 10 grand per month. Then I'm just going to build another company. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do real estate, all these things at one time. And you're focusing on multiple, multiple things. You're never good at one thing. So I want to get fucking great at this and be the best in the fucking industry. And then yeah. say like, hey, now I can go invest into real estate because I have the money. I have the capital to rest, invest into real estate right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, plenty of money to do that and the credit. I don't necessarily have the, the knowledge and the tools to, to make wise investments with real estate, but it's something I want to learn cool. right? when I'm in the right position to allow, allocate that time, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I resonate with that. I, I really want to get really good at the, the fitness and just like make that my number one thing and really, really focus on that too. So I, I'm in right. the same way with that right now. Right. Yeah. And then once you can operate without you, then you can say, all right, let me go purchase a house as an investment right? Yeah. To make yeah. more money and then five more and then buildings and let's go flip some businesses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like purchasing assets that are going to make you more money for sure. Yeah. And those, those, there's structures to that, right? There's structures to pass that 3 million mark. There's structures to pass that 10 million mark, uh, that 20 million mark. And I forgot which each point you need to pivot, but there's new things you need to learn from those positions. And I, from what I've learned so far from like mentors like Grant Cardone, shit like that um is that when you do pivot it's mostly either systems or people that are going to help you do that right um just really cool stuff you know like just getting to that level and being in that position in growth man you know what i mean as long as i'm growing i'm happy it doesn't have to be a million dollars over over a night in one month you know as long as the business is growing because i don't like fucking staying you know 100%. Yeah. Progress in whatever it is always like feels good and makes you happy. It's like, uh -huh. I, I tell my, my clients, like, you know, even if you reach your initial goals, like you're probably going to want to set new ones because it's the progress that feels good. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm part of the 1% right now, so I can literally, I make more than 99, you know, more than most human beings. And I say that not to brag, but you know, I can live happily on this financial income and I very, I live a pretty humble life. You know, I don't have a big house or a Ferrari or nothing like that. I just live in a small condo. That's all I need. Yeah. You know, I do buy some stupid shit like shoes and like stuff like that, but I could live a happy life on this income for the rest of my life, but I won't be happy because I'm not right. growing. I, right. So yeah, I, I didn't even notice and I don't, I'll, we can end it pretty soon because I know that you were trying to end it a second ago, but um, <laughs> what, what I've noticed is like when I have a, big month like a lot of times it's followed by almost like literally like almost like a period of like feeling kind of depressed like because because if big i don't time. have yeah because if i don't do as good that next month which inevitably if you have a really good big month a lot of times it's followed by a month that's not as good and yeah. so yeah Fucking so it's, sucks. it's yeah it's, <laughs> it's like those highs are always followed by some lows yeah. but then if you're in a low point like just know that there's going to be a high like at the end of that too it's just yeah. it just goes in waves so and then the highs are never good enough and it's not about the money that's what people don't under fucking stand yeah it's, it's not about the money 
right? Just Most people that you say, yeah, I made $18,000 in one month, they're going to be like, what the fuck, bro? Like, how much more money do you want? <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, dude, it's not about the money. It's hard to explain, but it's about growth. And it's just about growing. We're not happy unless we're, we're growing. 100%. And it feels like whenever you're having those big months, like when you're in the moment, and it's like, think things seem like they're firing on all cylinders, and you're learning more because you're doing so much like that, that's what's addicting. And that's what feels yeah. really good with that growth. And it's like, then when you feel like you're stuck, it's it's not the money because still on bad months, you know, we're, we're probably doing fine, but it, it's more of just like, it doesn't feel like you're doing enough. It doesn't feel like you're growing. So that's why it doesn't feel good. So. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So I guess that we, we can finalize this. <laughs> I could actually sit here and talk to you all day about this yeah. for another couple hours. Yeah, this has been but I actually fun. got a meeting coming up in five minutes. But uh, anything else you want to say, man? No, I just I appreciate you having me on, man. I'm just excited to see what the future holds for for you and me. And just, I hope you guys got some some good value out of this. So thanks for having me. Fuck yeah! Again, we're signing out. If you want to check out Cade, it's uh, at Cade underscore Junkerth. Uh, mine is at Eric underscore Anthony Fit. And, um, and that's with a K E R I K. So it's been, it's been lovely having you men. And, um, you know, we'll tack, we'll, we'll tackle some more of these things again. And, uh, yeah, bro. Uh, thanks for coming on. 100% man. Thanks for having me from peace.